laughing. Right, there we go. Hello and welcome to Falcon Blues TV. Callum, thanks for coming back in, mate. Yeah, good to see you. And you it's not just me who's really happy to see you. The main man himself. Give him a high five, go on. He's still on a bit of weight, Danny. Yeah, I know, yeah, he's not looking the best, is he? <laughs> Wearing a wonderful t shirt, isn't he, Callum? Yeah, great top hat. You know, you can get these at Big Cartel, Falcon Blues TV. You can just click on our Twitter and find them as well. They are sixteen ninety nine. If you want to come down here and just you know, they for a Christmas present, aren't they? They're very struggling. They really are, aren't they? You, yeah. you, we are singing from the same hymn sheet, aren't we, Callum? Yeah. They, it's amazing. If you want to cut out the middleman, come down. And like we've said, we want to get him back on his feet. But he's a good guy. Every shirt that you buy, at least a penny of it will go. Fun Mark will get back on his feet. So we're gonna need a lot of orders. We've had some from America. And Australia as well. Yeah. Well, I like it. <laughs> and then, um, you know, if you like singing James James Brown living in America, don't know how. It's mad, didn't he? But you know what? Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, he's got to earn his, he's got to earn his, like, two P a day he's getting. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's all right, though. But we're here to talk. <laughs> yeah. But obviously, you're talking about Manchester United uh, against Everton at Old Trafford. I was there. We got a battle in one all draw. And uh, do you think it was a point well earned? Tom? Yeah, I do. You, you know, you look at the team sheet, don't you? Before it starts, and you start to think yourself, well, why? Why is it not playing now? And when you realise, obviously, he was, he was sick in the morning, wasn't he? He wasn't feeling great. Yeah, there was um, a. And, and, and yeah. as well, was another one. So, real. Um, makeshift team like no one even knew who was playing there i think even sure. sky um the formation. Even, even the formation that got put up they thought they were playing five at the back didn't they the way that it was set out yeah. they had no idea that mason would slot in there and he was on sky sport i think or was it bbc or something you were asking them when did he find out and you reckon he found out what half half eleven something like that eleven o'clock oh, it's pressure that isn't it um you're playing you're playing centre mid like so he supposedly Ferguson asked him, would you be okay playing there? He's like, yeah, that'll, um, or that, I'll slot in. Like, he offered to say, yeah, I'd slot in. And he says, well, too fair, I'll let you off on that, but you're going in there anyway. <laughs> 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 so they the only option. That's boss. So, so, um, but yeah, you know, it was a, a great performance. And, you know, you look at what Ferguson's brought now. He's brought, like, real belief and... Everton fan, how long have you missed that at Goodison yeah, Park? It's, like, it's, been it's been unbelievable, hasn't it? And, you know, yeah, you might say we played like a lot of long balls against against Chelsea and stuff, but some of the stuff put ball was nice. We were nice and compact, the players were going into challenges, we weren't being nice and you know, you want to be a top team, you, you yeah. want to be aggressive and it's been for so long now, teams coming to Goodison Park and we've just been poor. You know, Norwich coming to Goodison, beating us. Yeah, that was one of the worst games I've been Sheffield United United well. coming, no disrespect, no really well organised team. Came and beat us, you could have played there for a week yeah. and we still wouldn't have scored. The, the, the tactics against that Sheffield United game really annoyed me because we were talking about it downstairs before, about constantly playing down the wings. Yeah. Um, Sigurdsson is isolated with two defensive midfielders back and then he played Moise Keane and he was like, let's put crosses into him. Yeah. You know, because he's a big commanding header of yeah. the ball. Yeah. Don't don't play down the middle where Sigurdsson is and play to his strengths, like playing on the shoulder. But that's why he's making our t-shirts <laughs> now, you know what I mean? That's why he's there, so you crack on it. His ears are burning out, people. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of Sigurdsson and Stevie, right, like, illness. Mm -hmm. Do be there, and they've been out on the... Uh, for a few shandies the night before. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, I kind of hope so, you know. If, it, if that was the case, I'd be like, what is these lads, you know? Yeah, Cucumber Martinez was on the bench as well. Madness that was, no. They, the, the bench, there was there was no midfielders on the bench, was there? No. Uh, Andy bench. Gordon from, was there, but he was more yeah, like he was, 10, he's, he's a wild player, yeah. isn't he? Um, coming in from the left hand side and whatever. But, you know, all the players grafted, and I think he rode like that little early chance thing that, that Nim guy had. And yeah. Put a wide the post. But I think for their the, the equalising goal, like, they were putting wave after wave of pressure on us, weren't they? But yeah, which is expected. For me, for me, I don't know. I think people should say that shot. Yeah, to, to be fair, there was someone next to me who was saying that because I, I was in the away stand, obviously. Um, and to, to be fair to him, there's two Everton players in front of him. I think mm -hmm. Baines mm -hmm. and Michael Keane go for the ball. And uh, don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a decent strike from him. Uh, he's a good player as well. Don't yeah. let that come on and equalise. It's Greenwood, isn't it? Yeah. I've got him on my bench, my fancy team. But 
We won't talk about my fans this game because it's been a bad two weeks. I think what changed the game for them, obviously, was him coming on. Um, and then James went to the left hand side, didn't he? And he started to cause yeah. a lot of problems cutting in instead of he's, going he's on the other side. So he wasn't really getting any joy against Baines, but going on the left allowed him to cut in. And once he's come inside, I've always obviously tried to track him. Ball's been laid off, and he obviously hasn't closed the space down quick yeah. enough. Um, put a lazy leg out from Baines and Nina, and it's gone through them and it's gone in. So you know, you take you take it to the point, don't you, right away from Old Trafford, and he's came yeah. in and you know. Said that he's, well. he's, got, he's got four points from, from them two games and looking on paper you'd think you're lucky to get one point from them two games you've got four so I agree uh, when he got interviewed on Sky Sports because when I got home from the match I, I watched it and uh, he was getting interviewed on the pitch and he, he pointed on Sam yeah, yeah I think yeah. it was with Jeff, Jeff Reeves and, yeah, uh, class. and he said you know we've only had two victories here and five draws yeah yeah you know what I mean he, and then like my favourite part was he said do you think it was a free kick for the young role on the keeper and they said right and he said well Looked yeah. like could have been free kick. Well, anything could be a free kick these days. Yeah. And like he's very well spoken, isn't he? He's yeah. he's quick as well. Because yeah. obviously, as we remember, he, he never spoke to the press much as a player. Yeah. Uh, one of my mate favourite moments was on Soccer AM and uh, Chris Kamara, it must have been about 2004. Yeah. And he's on the pitch and he's going Ryan Goodison and he, he sees Duncan and he goes, Oh, Duncan, have you got a word for Sky? And he just went, looked up at the sky and went, Hello, Sky. And then just got off and said, like, come out, I suppose, with that. Yeah. But it was bang on, though, because you couldn't get away with it now. Yeah, he, yeah. he come in the locker room, or the locker room, well, it's like the best one that, isn't it? It's too American, that. <laughs> yeah, not no offence to America, because you bought two T-shirts. But he, he, Max Benton was playing for Everton, he was number seven. And he has a laugh and looks at the shirt and says, he goes, it's true to say that Everton's number seven is bent. And they all had a laugh, and I remember it, and I was yeah. going, you couldn't get away with that these, these no. days, could you? No. With the... Um, on social media there's yeah yeah you know yeah everyone's offended and i mean chris kamara was technically right with what he was saying but someone had surely spin that to make him a, a bad man yeah you know yeah. we've went slightly off topic here but it's been fun <laughs> we'll get back on track with what do you think about um, everton's like i don't know sort of i believe after the chelsea game that was the most tackles Everton threw in, in the game in 10 years yeah which is pretty it says a lot about duncan doesn't it and his uh, yeah and i think you know the play responded, and you think of the likes of, you know, Holgate and Davis and Calvert Lewin, they were your Everton players, and I think you really respect Ferguson as well um, for what he does for the club and probably more so on the training ground as well, maybe with Calvert Lewin working alongside him. Um, it's like so, so, yeah, just, you know, they, they were really up for, and that's what Goodison Park should be like, you know, but all the people say about like monies and stuff, and, you know, Moyes built a great team, didn't he, when he was at us, but how many times did he play like them night games and the crowd was just buzzing because he just made it like Moyes in terms of his setup really hard for teams to beat us. You know, when United came to us, sure. and Davison scored that header. Um, the that, season we finished fourth. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, and that this, great, another great atmosphere as well. Yeah, so, you know, that's the, what we need to, we were to, to work we on. Yeah, we were. And obviously getting, you know, the players that we have were decent, but getting that extra 10% out of them every single game it made a difference and I think, you know, whatever happened under Marco Silva, he just, I don't know, he just wasn't, I don't know, he just wasn't getting either his tactics were wrong or whether the players just didn't seem to be bothered or buying into what he was doing. You know, can you compare that to Ferguson's, you know, two games? Now, you're always going to get that extra bit of motivation so from the players, but, you know, the, the teams that he had to, had to pick from and, and the players, you Completed know. squads. Yeah, you know, to get a draw at Old Trafford and you say, you know, Man, you are the team that we once were. It's still going to Old Trafford. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's a tough place to go anytime. Yeah, I know they're not what they were, but still, it's a place to go to. Well, they drew the draw the Liverpool there this season. True, they did, yeah. Yeah, it was. It was um, one all, wasn't it? They, they should have been a few games. Yeah, yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, massive in the game, yeah. So, um, we'll get a start on that, can't we? Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, it's. It's, it's a big difference yeah. just from like Marco's demeanour on the touchline, you know, if Everton got a goal down, he's like, yeah. he's got his hands in well, his pockets. That, that was mad, wasn't it? It was like, over 20 games that if we went behind first, we, we never won any. He game. never won any game yeah, that yeah. we did the other team game over, wasn't it? He so. didn't even salvage many points, uh, and one of them was against Spurs yeah. in the last minute. When, uh, and that's sort of down to like either lack of ideas, come back into the game, or more no. so probably mentality from the players, isn't it? and having that belief that they can come back, and that's that fight and desire, isn't it? No plan B. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he's got no plan B in games, and I mean, look where he is now. You know what I mean? He's, he's had yeah. no plan B for yeah. life either. Like, so, you know, Marco Skeletor, get back to work, mate. 
And now obviously going from that, we're going into the game tomorrow. Yeah, obviously Leicester uh, in the League Cup quarter finals. I'm a bit gutted there as well, that Leicester didn't win the other day. Against um, Norwich. Norwich. Because then you might think that they might you know, maybe rest one or two players type sure. thing. But I think Brendan Rodgers has gone in there. He's built a great team, um, got them playing, and he'll probably see this as a, as a chance to, you know, get some silverware. Um, City's still in it, obviously. Liverpool are in tonight. Oxford. Um, yeah. Never know. <laughs> um, obviously, Liverpool playing a, you know, a weakened team or whatever, but, you know, if they, if they go yeah. out, you know, if they'll uh, capitalise on that, then, you know, I think I've got a chance if they can get through. But, you know, Rodgers will be going all out to win it, I think. I think they'll play sure. the strongest team. But you know, so good good side as yeah. well. But but, the, but you know, night game at Goodison. You know, we played there on the silver. We got beat two one in, in the last couple of seconds. You know, yeah. you know, could be. So no, I was there. You know, I was there for that one as well, and it was horrible. Yeah. You know, just that weight, and then a load of just meths and arms. You know, you know, like they've won like the World Cup, yeah, and obviously, yeah, the oh, VAR. Me and him have had a few arguments this season. He's yeah. he's not getting a Christmas card, Mister VAR. Yeah, it's killing the game, isn't it? I think it really is. Yeah. It? There's less goals now getting scored. You know, I think VAR. It's it's got it's got its place. I sure. think it's, you know for them decisions. So for example, there's a decision the other day, wasn't it? Which one was a four? Um, there's an offside decision. Oh yeah, it was the the thing again. Form of Chelsea. You know, and that's got given as offside, and you know that would have been a draw. Sure. But VAR stepped in. Blatantly on the side, and and it gives the goal. It's cost but all, but all these all these ones where really like you know it is hip that's offside. Yeah, or I mean even for me, you had the bad one where it was his armpit. And... Yeah, well the, the Mane one you did the other day, you know the Liverpool and whatever, you know. Yeah. It's just you know it, I think it's just killing the game. There's going to be less goals scored. The amount of time that it takes, you know. Um, it's Steve, tough. Steve, Steve, as well. Steve Moore has made a good point to be fair. The Sheffield United game where he went to VAR over that handball incident. And after they've been given a penalty, I remember now actually. Yeah. You think about you get a penalty, you know who's taking it. You get the ball, you take the penalty. But now, it is it a penalty? You're waiting two or three minutes now. Which adds into yeah, it. Yeah, you know, second guess yeah, yourself. You're taking a penalty. You know, you want to take it. You don't want yeah. to wait two or three minutes. So it's then sort of your mind starts kicking now. Okay, so, well where we're going to put this pen now, and you start overthinking it. And he's done that and smashed it right down the middle of the crossbar. That's it. And it's, it's the old tactic, which goalkeepers use as well, don't they? Like, they'll tap the post, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Make them have longer to think about it. And it's just... It, it, it kills the game for me because it's very dull when it's happening. Like, I went to Spurs game and it's four minutes to check Delhi uh, Deli Alley is and balled it. Yeah. And it's pretty blatant because he's fucking jumping up. Yeah. And I, I remember seeing, uh, what's his name? Alan Pardew, who's on this list. <laughs> so not just that for just being a proper weapon. <laughs> like when he tried to headbutt that the whole player, or his dancing the final. Yeah, that yeah. bad that. But he, he turned around on, on I think it was is it I don't know, I would never know. Is it Bane Sports or Bean Sports? Yeah, Bean Sports. I, I call sports. it Bane because it's yeah, yeah. Batman villain yeah, you know yeah, me, I'm a nerd. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Alan Pardew's on it and he went, you know, I think that shouldn't be a penalty because he's jumping up to protect his head and Andy Gray just looked at him like he was just gonna like yeah. just literally kick him off the show there and then and how can you protect yourself when you go up with Yeti Mina like that? He's hard to defend yeah, anyway. Yeah. And what? Well, Vah, you dominate too much on this show. So, in terms of. Danger men for them? It depends. The Leicester game, you know, it's whoever they settle with. I think the child and Calvary are really good. Yeah. Up top. And they're, 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 they're going to stay. Um, the problem you've got is, is they're, they're central three players, really, where they play Madison and Didi and Tillman's. Um, you look at the last day, last two games, um, I think they played Norwich and Villa. Madison's he created 11 chances in them two games, so I think him, and another big influence as well, um, in terms of final third passes being Ricardo Pereira, um, for them the right side of midfielder, who really bombs on as a sort of a right winger. Massive influence um, for Leicester, so... This is me, that's my... I think, I, think, I think if Everton can... Set up a plan to sort of nullify them too. Then yeah. I think you have a chance of stopping Vardy. Sure, he's um, the goal machine. Yeah, because you know Madison gets in the little pockets, looks to find Vardy, then in the iron and stuff. So you know, a plan in place for for Madison. Um, and obviously our left hand side, whoever might that be, you know, defending that side. Obviously, Luca Dean's gonna he's gonna be out, yeah. isn't he? So he's, it's he's been playing Baines. through the same body for a bit as well. It's gonna be Baines possibly in a wall. We having a wall with there wouldn't be a bad shout to be fair because Wolby's quick. Um, he but, can help like yeah. with that pace because they have got a lot of pace yeah. and that was music to my ears Callum because of my fancy team I've got those two players for Leicester 
Um, and Tillman's for me, he's a really good player. Yeah. I remember when they got him, I was like, <sighs> remember we got linked to him like two or three yeah, years ago. Yeah. I used to get him on FIFA all the time because you can <laughs> go on Google and be like, cheap young players that are going to be bosses yeah. like Yori Tillman's when he's like 18. Yeah. So he's always got a, a good long range on him as well. He gets a lot of assists. Um, Vardy, who just seems to score against everyone as well. He's, yeah. he's, he's the man, isn't he? I yeah. know his bed is a grass. Is it? <laughs> 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 I was getting sung at Leicester away. Right? funny. <laughs> There was another one about Daniel Rodgers, but we're not going to say what that uh, one was. Yeah. That was funny as well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so it depends how they set up. But you might think about Mason Holgate and that, and that holding ball, maybe going man for man with with Madison potentially. Um, but it's one of them, isn't it? It's With their central three players, it's how do we combat that? Because if we've got Davis and Holgate in there, there'll be overloads in that central sure. area. Sure. So, you know, do and they've played a lot of minutes lately, yeah, yeah. and they've been so it's, so it's whether you still go with two up top and then get someone to drop in. You know, it's it's one of them. How, how we combat that really? Because we, that was a problem against against United towards the end of the game where tired legs. It was yeah. It yeah. was um. It wasn't that. It was sort of they brought Matter on, didn't he? Um, he brought Greenwood on, and obviously they had McTominay in the middle and Fred. So they sort of had like three players against our two. And that's where the problem arose then, um, in terms of the whole the M- M- Moise Keane yeah. situation where Moise Keane got taken off and Twitter went into an absolute meltdown. It, it did, it. didn't it? And I, I won't lie, to be honest, Callum, when we got out of the ground, the first thing I said, I did a video for obviously us and Grand Old Team. I had to ask what was all that about, because mm. from where I was sitting, it was like, he, he did that at one point, you know, like, like a not big shrug, and when mm. he got off, it was like, Duncan didn't even want to look at him, mm. you know what I mean, obviously he took that long walk down the tunnel and you know, hello darkness my old friend, that's probably what he's thinking. Yeah. I only found out later that night that Tosin left as well, Yeah. Uh, when he seen me ask he was coming out, maybe he was going to tell him when he's keen, but yeah. what, what's your views on that Callum? It's, you know, do you know what, and I'm not going to lie about this, when the sub thing went up, I actually thought to myself, you know what, he could bring Moise Keen back off here. I thought, no, we can't, you can't. Yeah. But then I was thinking, the only other players you can bring off here are Rich Allison and Cal Blue. They're the only players you can bring off. And people say, oh, well, you could have brought, um, who else was on the pitch? You could have brought Iwobi off or you could have brought Davis off. Oh, no, because because that's where we're having the problems in Central. We need to keep them players yeah. on. And obviously then the right-hand side, where James had just gone off and they brought, they brought Matter on, they were getting enjoyed on the side with the likes of Rashford and stuff. So it was... If Nias comes on and Keane stays up top, Nias is going to do that role on that side. And then it was Moise Keane can't, can't go on the right hand side yeah. because he's um he's giving away fouls and he can't defend. Yeah. So you're thinking, you know what, Moise Keane could come off here. And he took him off. Um and there was a video up about um Moise Keane, he was on the corner, I think it was 13 minutes in, and he's breathing out of his back after after 13 minutes. And I know that. People put a stat up saying he's done this many sprints and he's closed down and, and all that. But you look at going on in, in a game where you win it 3-0 and it's comfortable, it's an easy game to go into. You go in, he comes on the pitch, we're playing at Old Trafford, it's wave after wave of attack. It's high tempo. It was end-to-end stuff in terms of them just getting the ball, playing it into, you know, it was chasing shadows at times. So that's why he's breathing. And, you know, People slating Ferguson saying, well, he wasn't at, he wasn't at the pace of the game. I probably agree with Ferguson that he wasn't at the pace mm. of the game. But it's a big call to to bring him off. But at the end of the day, Ferguson's come in not to lose games. Ferguson's come in. You mentioned that he knows the record of he have won there for so long and the last time he won there was with an old weirdo scored. You know, oh, so, he, so, he, so, he, he, so, so what's the most important thing? Is it keeping keen on? And then adjust the tactics that you don't want to adjust to because you think that their left hand side are going to create problems if you put a four on that side. Or do you go, we need to get a point and I have to be, you know, adamant that Keane's coming off and get the point. Yeah. Do, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's one of them. And people go, well, you shouldn't have to make a sub. There's only three, three, four minutes left. The best, the best, the best managers in the world make substitutions in the last few minutes. You look at it. Jose Mourinho, you know, different yeah. calibre of manager. How many times has he played Man United? Or he's played, you know, an Arsenal, he's at Chelsea, and it's been a really tight game, he's winning, he's winning 1-0 when Drogba scored. Sure, yeah. He's made sub-sports into the game every time, yet you're getting the 30 seconds added on. 
but you're killing the tempo of the game. Sure. You, you make, you, you're letting your players get that respite. Tom Davis was breathing, Richarlison was, somewhat. it gives them that little second breath to just go, you know what, nice one boss, you know, yeah. you've slowed the tempo down for it, because there's no other way that the tempo's going to slow down, no. unless you get a throw in, and you take half an hour to bring it in, but then you watch a lot of then it's going to be a yellow card, you, the referee's going to hurry it up, he's not going to like slow the game down. Sure. So, it was a clever thing by Fergus in terms of putting the substitution on, could he have dealt with it better? I think if, if he's going to, in hindsight, if he was to do it again and he brought Keane off, I think he'd probably, you know, give one of them up to Scholes saying, listen, it's not to do that, you've done. It needs to be done. Yeah. But to sort of that blank of not happy with you and he's walked past, he's 19, so, yeah. he's not having a great time. It's and, not going to and, 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 yeah, and that was sort of the, the reason behind Evan Van Gogh to melt down on Twitter about it. Um, and it was, it was mad, it was, it was all over social media, and, and that was the, the part that Everton fans couldn't understand. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a tricky situation because obviously, I mean, he's missed two, two training sessions, hasn't he? That's why he got dropped with the Southampton yeah, yeah. squad. Yeah, yeah. He's done it with Italy as well. Um, do, what do you think, Callum? Do you, obviously, he's got potential, he was bought for yeah. a reason, he's got yeah. goals. Uh, I know he's not played a lot of minutes, but do, do you think? He's a bad apple. Do you think he's got a play with potential? Sure, then I think you know we've seen clips of him training stuff. The, the kid's got talent, hasn't he? He's got he's got raw talent. Yeah. Um, he's got great talent to me yeah. as well. I'm, you I'm can see, see him. But you can see why you know Silver said that he wasn't ready. And everyone was criticising Silver saying yeah. you know what's the script here? But you can see probably physically he's not ready potentially fitness wise. And you're going well. Maybe I should have that before he brought him on. But you know training at a high intensity and you know a seven v seven game or eleven v eleven a finch farm. You know, it's going to be totally different to the tempo at Old Trafford sure. in the 70th, yeah. 75th minute. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a big game for the kids to come on and, you know, whatever's happened, happened. But you'd like to think that, you know, going forward now we can get back on side and we can make him a good player because otherwise, you know, potentially because we're losing a very good player. Yeah, yeah. What would, uh, what would your prediction be tomorrow, Callum? <sighs> yeah, she is going to be booing. I think... I think the first goal is important. I think the first goal is massively important. I think if I think if they score first, it's gonna be really hard to get back in the game because defensively they're very astute. But when you look at them against Norwich, I think how they coped with with obviously with Puky not even being that quick neither. Um they sort of played a high line, um, and he got caught out a couple of times where Puky got in and he's not the fastest player and he no. should have scored to make it two on to be fair. I know. So um, I think I think with that, you know, Sionko, the, the defender, and Evans, decent defenders, but I think you can get at them. And I think when you play one up top, you know, they've caused the problems with Puki. If you've got Calvert-Lewin and Richard up against them for the full 90 minutes, you know, hitting them and, you know, challenging them every, you know, three yeah. or four minutes or whatever, then you've got a real chance. So it depends on how they set up, but I think if we can look to play the ball in behind a lot, behind their back line, then I think we've got a real chance, but we need to be playing a couple of goals. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, we gave them a good game uh, away a few weeks ago, you yeah. know what I mean? And we've not been playing the best at that point, you know, Mitchie yeah. scored again as well, and uh, I think, he had, before the United game, he had three goals in a row, you know what I mean, all yeah. ends as well. Yeah. And uh, it's, I'm going to go, I, my prediction, I'm going to go for a KG 2 1 win for Everton. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sick of sitting yeah. on the fence, Carl. Yeah, yeah. No, what? You know what I mean? I think if we score the first goal, I think 2 1's a, a decent shout. Um, I'd hate for it to. Do we know the penalties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd hate for it to score the penalties. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 so I think if we, if we can. No one win, likes penalties. If we win that and touch wood, you know, Villa goes 3 to 9, I'd, I'd, I'd fancy Villa. I think that's fine. I'd love them to be decent, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I just don't want I just don't want any more derbies, mate. Yeah. I can't have them. Look what it's done to me. Yeah. I've had to hire Marcos the Skeletor. Yeah. And he said it's been only been. No, I couldn't believe that I picked up the old man. <sighs> I I kind of predicted yeah. it. Oh, I couldn't have couldn't have wrote it. You know what? I wouldn't have imagined it if he would have got a home tie good or something. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to their place. I mean, there's a reason I put Tony Adams on the list. <laughs> and I did it there and then. He'd made but, that, wasn't he? Oh you kind of would be though, wouldn't you? Because BBC I was going to say they must have went out and took him for a few drinks. That's a bad idea. They must have got him a boss meal. He must have done, wasn't he? If they're like, yes, get him. We've got a really good tie for the telly. Maybe they'll get him a new suit jacket or something. Yeah. The one was Michael Richards, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. He was him and him. Well, wasn't he? Yeah. 
Yeah. Remember he scored against Derek in the last minute as well. He's like, you know what? <laughs> He's come on the list. Come on the list. <laughs> Just for fucking doing that. Why didn't you tackle Tony Adams when he was taking off them balls? Lost me list. Got yeah. some list there, haven't you? I tell you, it's a big book, isn't it? Bigger than the Bible. It's forever told me this will be the Bible. <laughs> for number 31. My uh, spot that wrong with someone. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. My uh, Richards. And you know what, as well? I remember having 40 managers in 2006 and I bought them for like 4.3 million or something, which was a big chunk of my budget, Callum. And he was dog shit. <laughs> he was dog shit. A bit of a strain as well, didn't he? Yeah. I feel better now. <laughs> I feel better now that he's off my list. I'll sleep better tonight. But listen, Callum. Thanks for coming on, mate. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah, Callum's that he, he's such a good guy. He's actually bought a, a t-shirt because it's it's such a fabulous design. Isn't he? Well, yeah. Marco's been working hard. Actually, we've been kicking him when he's down. Like, give him a good kick and then if you want, Callum, go on. Get your um, get your What's orders up? in, and you want to say happy birthday as well. Oh it? yeah, it's uh, Mr. Williams is not directing today, Jay. Uh, so I called him Dad Baby the other week because he was breathing down the camera. Which <laughs> was a good laugh. But yeah, happy birthday, Jay. This channel wouldn't exist without Jay. Yeah, he's a good guy and um, happy birthday to you happy birthday <laughs> I'm gonna stop there I was gonna do Madeline Monroe yeah I sent it to him this morning full on belter and like you know my mother said I was a good singer yeah, so yeah, I believe yeah. her yeah. she's an honest woman <laughs> but until next time up the fucking toffees Colin Chong that was sad I can't wait to that that was fun <laughs>